get it. I'm just trying to get rich. I can't go where the paper don't flow. I can't hang if you ain't about the dough. Let's get rich. If you stagnant, not worry about no bread. Ain't no way that you could get ahead. I'm trying to get rich. Stacking paper, trying to live a better life. Wait, I forgot. Hey, you <laughs> Hey, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Pick a Struggle. This is Dre Day All Day Every Day with my co host, LaPree. Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing? Y'all good? Girl, I'm recovering. Why? Last night, I went to my cousin's house. We were playing Drunk Uno. Oh, my goodness. That sounds fun. Yeah, it was until I, w- I was getting mad. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> everybody's taking shots, right? Uh-huh. And um, nobody was paying attention to the game. Right. People going out of turn. Mm-hmm. Ain't playing the right cards. Yo. It's drunk. It's drunk. Oh, no. You ain't supposed to play right now. I know. But I was. <laughs> I'm like a stickler for like formation and rules and stuff like that. I hate when people get too drunk or too lit. And oh, start, yeah. Like, yeah. You're not paying like, attention. <laughs> like, no, you cannot. First of all, this is a nine, not a six. <laughs> That's an easy mistake. No, though. it's not. It depends on what side no, of the like, table you're sitting on. It the, don't matter. That's what the that line is. is there for, to indicate the bottom, bottom of the number. Yes, is yeah. it? I th- see, I didn't know yeah. it was the bottom of the top. Yeah. Always, the bottom mm. means it's a six, right? The If the if the the line is on the loop of the number, yeah. that's a six. Yeah. Mm. If it's the other way, it's a nine. It's like easy to... Easy. So the line, the line on the nine, though. The the line is under the nine. The so bottom. you'll see the nine, yeah. and then it'll be the line is under that. When you so. see the six, the line it's is the, under okay, there. Okay. The line is the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Right. Bottom line. But that. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> and then not only that, it was um, people calling fake unos on other oh, people. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, pull those, pull those two. I sound like y'all just got drunk and ignorant. You know? no, they did. I was paying attention. I'm counting cards. I know what's in people's hand. So you, oh, I can't play cards with you. <laughs> no, you're doing too much. I'm not a, a good card player. I can't play spades. Don't take away my black card. Mm. I know the concept of spades, but I can't. Yeah, I, really I can play, play it. but it's not. I can't play aggressively. Yes, yeah, spades is aggressive. Yeah. Like you can have PTSD if you play spades. Yeah, that's why person. I don't play it no more. I don't either. I'm like, nah. No, I play yeah. Uno. Yeah. I play Skimbo. That's, like oh, that's old school. Jenga. Or Yahtzee, because mm-hmm. I like math. I like numbers. So I play Yahtzee and yeah. do it very aggressively. But when it comes to spades, it's like, uh uh-uh. uh. And then you got a partner, too. So yeah. you're like, uh. right. <laughs> Y'all gotta okay, work together and try to vibe line. off each other, right? And then they looking at you, and you like, "How and many books you got?" Uh, do not renege, I swear for God. Don't renege or don't over uh, or under. Uh, don't bid. cut me. Don't underbid. Yeah, because your partner will get. Man, right? like when you and, knew I was and, gonna... and don't cut me. If yeah. I play a heart and it's a high heart, don't play a low spade. Oh, I Man. do it all the time. See, you would not. You would be <laughs> mad at me. I'm telling y'all, y'all be mad at me. Be like, why you still a prayer? Like, you ain't. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me just go. Make, I'll make drinks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then what else happened? Then um, a toilet got broke. Uh, I ain't dang. gonna talk about how or who did it. Oh my goodness. But. I ended up becoming a plumber for a few minutes. So it got clogged. No, I broke <laughs> as in like in half. Like like yeah, the bowl, part yeah, of the bowl. The, the tank. What? Yeah. Was somebody? It was everybody related? Here? Yeah, we are, related. Okay, we are related. We are related. So it wasn't nothing like that. Yeah, no that. nasty or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, it was. Someone tried to go to. Use the facility. Use the commode as old folks. Right, they come out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. I don't know what happened. They tried to pee on the top of it. Right. I don't know. <laughs> right. Leave a, um, oh, what does it call it? I forgot what it's called. But anywho, but um, a upper decker. Oh, uh, yeah. When they, <laughs> they boo boo in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> I would be so mad. Oh my I God. Because you, you can't flush that. <laughs> yeah, you know? can't flush that. And then we were laughing so hard. And yeah. I was like, I just want to be faithful. The Bible said everything, give thanks. Right. I want to be thankful. And it was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, because it wasn't me. <laughs> I wasn't the one who did it. So you I'm, think that person was drunk? Like it was an oh, accident? No, yeah. It, of course it was an accident, but they, right. it was just so drunk. But how do you? I, 
like you don't know, I wasn't a fly on the wall. That's a subconscious thing. You and then, to sit as right, a toy. then you, and then I was asking a person who, I'm like, how this happened? I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. We still don't know what was done. No, still don't know exactly. So, and then me and another person, we becoming detectives trying to reenact the scenario. Right. Like, <laughs> well, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah. We all here reenacted. Did you go this way? Right. Did you go that way? Because that's a big jump. Like, the toilet seat is here. Right. The back of the toilet is here. How did you mix uh, up the, the position of your body? Because, I mean, you sit, you're going to have to sit in a whole different Yeah, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what happened, but it oh was just so goodness. funny. And then the person who, who, they, uh, who lives there is trying to do uh, uh, put in a maintenance call. Maintenance is not finna. No, because they um, you can do it online uh-huh. just to put in the order. Uh-huh. But I was like, girl, it's Sunday morning. Right. So I, they coming. not coming in till Monday. Right. They just gonna <laughs> come in Monday this. and read it. Right. <laughs> they gonna be like, hold on. Let me ask you this. Do they only have one bathroom? No, they had two. It was oh, two. Okay. There's two okay. bathrooms. Okay, cool. that, and that then sense. I ended up cutting the water off at the main, like when it comes in, coming out of the pipe, I was able to turn it off. Uh-huh. But it was water in the. This is the funny part. So we, I hear the do 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 do. I'm like, <laughs> what? Is what? That? what is that? <laughs> I'm like, whatever it is, they'll be all right. Right. But then I get up and walk in the hallway. My socks are getting wet. Oh, God. oh man. I'm like, is it what? Water? No. Oh, it's just no. Right. That's the thing. They didn't even get a chance to use it. It was like soon as they walked in, do 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 do. Like what? What? Huh? Who? Okay. They like yanked so, the pipe yeah, out the Yeah, it was wall. hilarious. So we were we that were in the middle of a hand. No we were in the middle of a, no. This is fun. This is the person who taught me how to drink. So oh, I'm yeah. like, I've never seen you like this before. Yeah. And it was just so funny. And we were in the middle of a hand. We were like, you know, it's it's time out. Right. Y'all go ahead and go to bed. And I'm finna go yes. to my working toilet. Yes, let's go. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> everybody, here. everybody, just go oh, go to bed. Goodness. Go to bed. And then um. One of the funnier parts, well, not as funny as that, but we were we only played like maybe like four hands, uh-huh. and the second hand took so long, cause you know Uno the decks are like that thick. Yeah. We went through like five or six of those. That's what you had to reshuffle hand. and put the yeah, uh-huh. cause everybody was like take a shot or it was we got to shuffle the hands. Uh-huh. It was a card where you shuffle the hands, so you take everybody's car, yeah. shuffle it up, and then redistribute to everybody. Uh-huh. And we kept doing that, and it was just, it took forever just to go through the second hand. And it was really funny because I was the one that had dealt it. Yeah. So they're like, it's your fault. Right. <laughs> and it, at the end of the day, right. it's always the person that's fault. And I was like, let me just go home because I'm just glad this ain't me. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like the biggest one. Uh-huh. Out of the group, oh, so they automatically thought yeah. it was you, huh? No, no. If it was yeah. me, it would have been your big ass. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have sat on the toilet like Dre that. Ain't broke yeah. the toilet, right? No, uh, uh-uh. uh. That would have been not... like a family, like yeah, a joke, forever, right? yeah, forever. And then the person who did it was just so embarrassed, just holding their head down. Oh. And I was like, yeah, it's time for you to go to bed. And then they were falling all over the place. Male or female? I. You can't say. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> but I was like, I'm telling my mama, <laughs> right? What's when it, when in the morning, <laughs> shenanigans, girl. Well, well at least it, you had an event for weekend. Or at least it went. That was morning. just yeah, right. That was just one day. I didn't do nothing for the rest. I was like, I'm just gonna <laughs> lay here and do nothing. Yeah, I'm on vacation. That's pretty much what I've been doing. Right, watching Netflix. Found what you been watching? Summer. I watch uh, the first episode of. Uh, Black AF. Do you like it? No. I don't like the guy, the dad. Kenya? Yeah, Kenya. I cannot get past his I could have sworn that was a woman. Well, I mean, I did too. Mm. Kenya Burris. I every time I would hear that name, yeah. I'm always thinking female. Who's the one who did do, blackish, yeah. grownish, no. colorish? It's and a black guy. All that. And the um the plot, I mean the everything, the story of it is okay. It's just that I can't get past his voice. I don't I like that the show is called Black as F and mm-hmm. like the main people are super light skinned. Yeah, you know. they're not. But they're Rashida black, Jones though. is mixed. They are black. Like, yeah. And he seems to be a mixed. I, or just I, I feel yellow. like he's mixed. Or he, yeah, he yellow. Right. And that's like Hollywood's agenda to attack the black man. They're Go, like, uh, we, we, we ain't going to <laughs> We going to let black people on TV. Reaching. But I think the black AF is um, the person that the, the, it's not the, 
it's not supposed to be the skin color. It's like who they are. Yeah. They because black, because black. the thing is, there are light skinned people who live out here and re- live regular everyday lives. I feel like light skinned people and mixed people are more black than some of us brown people. Because I have a mixed girl, a home girl, and she is so pro black. She more black than me. I'm like, girl, your mama white. <laughs> how did you get this way? Yeah. <laughs> you wasn't even raised by your daddy. So how you get blacker than me? What? <laughs> You were raised in pretty much a white household. Yeah. Mama, oh but, wow. But she she was very pro, very pro black. But um, so I watched Black AF. I I watched uh some old uh, old school movie, of course. Um, I watched Players Club. I watched a little what? bit of Waco. I watched Ozarks. What else I watched? Extraction. Oh my goodness! I, I ain't heard of none of this stuff besides players. Ooh, I've heard about all of those. You but have? haven't watched any of them. All of these on and Netflix. Roxanne, Roxanne. Y'all remember the? I don't. Y'all yeah. don't remember. But ain't I watched. Like a- yeah, about Nas or something like that. You said what? I saw. I thought that was about like Nas's girlfriend or something. No, he Nas was in the movie, but he was a little boy. Oh, it's about okay. Roxanne uh, Shantae. She a rapper back in. The, she was a rapper back in the eighties, oh. and they did like a, just a little tidbit of how she got started and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so but you like that? I did what because you, it brought back memories. Of, yeah, of, you know, being a kid. And so you like just that. can stand the voice of Kenya on yeah. Black AF because some of the stuff they were talking about was really like. It was good, like yeah. some of the subjects, the topics, or whatever. But his voice, like, just so annoying. Because he got, he, he sounded like a white guy. <laughs> but he's talking about black problems, and it was yeah. like. <laughs> I can't relate. Right. Not with that voice. Well, the way people was describing it to, describing it online, mm-hmm. I just took it as it was another blackish show. Yeah, that's it, what it I pretty think. much is. It's yeah. blackish on a different level, like blackish with like money, top tier, more money. Yeah, must say because Andre had money on, has money on blackish. Yeah, but these people on uh, Black AF, they they are rich. They probably the top tier. Oh, okay. Type elite, and they got some good cameos. You know, they got some. You know, they got a. Oh, Snoop. Dogg. Now, I mean, they got people like celebrities that come through the show, but I just I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't watch it too long. I was like, no. Waco was good. Waco? Mm-hmm. What was that? About David Koresh. Thank you. I was going to get into that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, God. It was, no, it was something else I was supposed to say at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. The other day I had found out another classmate of mine had passed away. Oh, yeah. man. And um, then what even made it worse was it was a shooting. Oh, and man. so they're investigating it. But this <clears throat> is just sad because it seems like every year, like, I've seen, like, four or five classmates pass away. Oh. And I'm just like, ugh. Oh, yeah. We think my high school has a curse. Because it seems like every year since we graduated, one of our classmates dies. What uh, yeah. what school was that? Timberview. Oh. Oh, yeah. Timberview. Mansfield. <laughs> Mansfield. Mansfield ain't so uppity. It's kind of like a little upscale, honestly. Right. Yeah, it's not really too bad. <laughs> it's Mansfield. It's all in with a toll road. That's yeah. All <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but since you mentioned Waco, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So... One thing I hate is that whenever I leave here, whenever we leave here on Sundays, I'm always seeing something that had happened. I'm like, I wish I saw this earlier so I could talk about it when it was relevant. Yeah. But last week when I left, I had saw something. It was like, this is, is uh, today was, or April, uh, April, April the 20th. 19th. Yeah, the 19th mm-hmm. was the anniversary of what happened in Waco. Yeah. And so today I was watching like a whole documentary. Yeah. And it was about this guy named David, which I forgot his original name because he ended up changing it. But David had his own compound Mm -hmm. uh, in this small city outside of Waco. Mm -hmm. And they were Christians, which is very, this, which is why. Seven day event. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was about a cult? No. No. Well, (laughs) no. What you mean, no? Yes and no. Because <laughs> yeah. that's pretty much the whole like, premise of Like, the- I believe, because, you know, I have that weird belief or opinion that Christianity is a cult. Religion is a cult. I mean, yeah, just, basically. You know. Yeah. And so, but what he was, it wasn't like no Helter Skelter, Charles Manson kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They all studied the Bible and mm-hmm. had Bible study like three times a day. Right. And it was just them living in a church in their own, what they called it a church. Yeah. It was in their own community. Uh, and that was it. Yeah. yeah. And they talked about that, like the, their biggest belief was the fall of Babylon and we're going to be attacked by the government and all this other stuff. And that yeah. was like his main teachings. Mm-hmm. 
And come to find out the stuff actually did happen. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, he kind of, it was going to happen. Yeah. He kept prophesying that. Yeah. You know, so. Which is, keep putting it out in the energy. It's Eventually, gonna, yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll come to pass. Right. And so, what had happened was, they acquired all these weapons mm-hmm. illegally, mm-hmm. Uh, according to the ATF. Which is a lie, but. Yeah. Okay. And so this said allegedly. Yeah. And so um, February the twenty eighth, the ATF went in and started shooting at the compound. Mm-hmm. And so the Davidians, which is what they were called, yeah. shot back and killed four ATF agents. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so um, they end up blocking off the compound, mm-hmm. and 50, I think they said like fifty nine days or yeah, sixty days, like 50 some days. The government was watching them and trying to get them to come out and. Mm-hmm the beginning they ended up releasing some kids mm-hmm. and some kids went to foster care and all this other stuff. Yeah. And then eventually April the 19th, that's when they lit, they took tanks and went, mm. drove through the house yeah. and was shooting people in the house and set it on fire. Yeah. They threw, well, they threw gas inside yeah. of the compound, which kind of drew some of the people out. Not everybody got out. But uh, David Koresh ended up, you know, killing. Well, he, they don't really know how it happened, but when they found him, he had a bullet in him. Yeah. And the fire was set. They said they don't know if he set the fire or not. They know who said it. Set the fire. They know but they, the ATF is saying, the FBI is saying that they didn't set a fire. They just threw gas in there. <clears throat> yeah. But the one thing that they did know, and this was one of their scare tactics, they knew that the kids didn't go, wasn't, wasn't going to have a gas mask, and there was, like, plenty of kids in there. So they was thinking, like, okay, let's hurt the this is what I got from. Let's hurt these kids. So in return, we're going to get David out because yeah. it was some of his kids that were in there. But that made no sense because you're driving a tank mm-hmm. where there are people. Mm-hmm. And there was this one guy where they did the auto- the autopsy of his body. Mm-hmm. They were like, yeah, half of his body is gone. It was ran over. And it was because he got ran over by a tank. But right. Like what I don't get is like what was going on at the compound that like the ATF and Nothing. FBI wanted Just to the like fact mess that with. They him. got word that they had guns. So they yeah. got a package from UPS and the package when it broke open, mm-hmm. it had uh grenades in there. Oh. So that's what caught the attention of the law enforcement because the UPS worker called and was like, Hey, I'm about to deliver some grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all want to yeah. intervene? So they was like, Really? And so when they asked him where they were delivering the package to, uh. they was like, I'm going to the Mount Carmel. Carmel. Car- that was yeah. a weird name. I was Mount like, Why Carmel? Carmel? I don't I know. never knew that, but. Yeah, on. they he said this is what we're doing. So the police was like, "Well, you know, for the last few years we've been getting reports that people been shooting out there. So why they need grenades? They already got all these guns. Oh, man. So that's why the ATF got involved mm. and was like, hey, yeah, what y'all need all this for?'" And then when the ATF got there, according to David and to some footage that was lost, mm-hmm. and to and some of the reporters had reported that ATF were approaching the house, mm-hmm. David opened the door, and they started shooting. That's what, yeah, and that's what they, because they were saying. Well, the ATF I, started shooting, let me say that. The ATF yeah. is saying they didn't shoot first, but yeah. the people from the compound were saying that, they were saying David shot first, but the people in the compound that survived said that the ATF shot first. In my opinion, if y'all coming over there and y'all scared and y'all thinking people got guns, I'm pretty sure y'all probably start shooting first. Yeah. Because if he opened the door, that means that he was willing to be like, hey, what's up? Why y'all here? Um, The thing I, the reason why I feel like the compound should have, should have been left alone is because they were minding their own business. Yeah. They were under the guidelines. I mean, Texas got open carry or Texas got conv- I think back then it was con- concealed. But anyway, they were on a, they were on their acres. They were minding their own business. They were taking care of their people and their families and right. stuff like that. So why are y'all bothering these people? Like why are y'all coming in? I mean the whole grenade thing, they was they was they wasn't doing that to go run out and, you know, mess up the yeah. town or nothing. They was yeah, like, there, get there was prepared. nothing, no evidence was, of yeah. and they were calling like a terroristic group and it's like, How? Right. They ain't done nothing. They done yet. They yeah. They haven't done anything. So why are you forcing somebody's hand to make this problem a problem? Yeah. The only thing that really that I really had an issue with is him marrying them little girls. Now you're going too far. He done, he. How he, young were they? Eleven. The youngest one he married or had a baby with. She was eleven when they first started. Her yeah. mom is the one that delivered her to him and was like. Well, then it ain't none of our business then. I just don't like the idea <laughs> of that. And another thing I didn't like some of his beliefs were like, okay, 
He said that he was the Messiah, the, the sinning Messiah. So he was sent here from God to be just like a human man. You know, I'm a, yeah. I'm a sin, I'm going to do all this. And, um, but so I can understand why y'all do what y'all mm -hmm. do. And then what else did he say? But um, there's nothing different from, I, well, in my opinion, is there's no different from what he's saying about himself to what priests and preachers have been saying about themselves for years, mm -hmm. that they are chosen and right. the only way mm -hmm. that you can receive salvation is if I preach this to yeah. you and you do talk. Yeah, like Catholics been doing, like, it was, because, you know, at first, uh, priests were the only ones who can interpret the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it was like, if you want forgiveness, you got to confess to me what right, you did. Right. And I'll talk to God on your behalf. And see what he said. Yeah, right. it's like, mm -hmm. who gave you this power? Right. <laughs> exactly. No, that ain't how it works. So he ain't no different from pe what people have been doing for years. But it was just weird to me because like, they were Christians. Yeah. Like, yeah. under that, like, uh, Christianity. Uh, under that umbrella, they yeah. studied the Bible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they believed in Jesus, and believed mm -hmm. in God, and and they was willing Mind to die for, yeah. for what they believed in. Right, which more so, power to you. Right, because I don't... Some of these Christians, now, no. especially <laughs> the black Baptist ones. The, listen, <laughs> I don't even want to get into... <laughs> I don't even want to get into the Baptist Christian, black Baptist Christians, because some of them are a fool. Now, all of them ain't going to call out the whole group. I will. But I do it for you. Some of them, you just be like, is this really how it's supposed to be judged? Right. Mental? Just and uh, everything. Yeah. You're not even willing to be like, because um, I remember somebody was like, uh, a comedian that said this. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, like it, like Muslims mm -hmm. will sacrifice themselves for God. Yeah. Try to tell a Christian that, uh-uh, God just got me a house. I don't think he <laughs> want me to do that. Let me pray on it. Right. Let me see what he say. They don't sound like some guy right. would say, what? Let How me, you know? Let me fast. Right. See what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna fast for an hour. I'm just gonna fast from Facebook. But it was, and it was, that fasting be crazy. Like they'll be like, "Oh, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna be on Facebook for two hours. That's my fast." Right? That ain't no fast. That ain't not a fast. That's you going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one, the thing that was troubling was how is it that it, what, how does this make sense? You're going to torture the children mm -hmm. in order to get the grown ups to surrender. That makes no sense because before they attacked, they had cut they cut out the electricity, mm -hmm. cut out the water, and this one guy who ended up surviving and you know and getting out, mm -hmm. he um, he was saying that they had to collect rainwater, mm -hmm. and the water was rationed to where everyone was getting like eight ounces eight ounces of water a day, uh -huh. and it's like how the yeah, your means is not justifying the yeah. overall cause. Yeah, if I'm yeah. saying it right, mm -hmm. and then you drive through the building with and with all this gas and some people were saying that the gas was making the kids throw up and, yeah, cause they and have yeah. A mask. yeah and then it ends up being set on fire because mm -hmm. of stuff you're doing that, that none of it is making any sense right. and then stuff is being lost mm -hmm. in investigations mm -hmm. the whole crime scene was bleached and cut off mm -hmm. it's like and we'll never really know what it, what happened there no. i mean that's just i feel like that's just the government wanting to be in control of everything and everybody and so what what stemmed from the waco was the oklahoma city bomber two years later then timothy mcveigh because he was actually there i did a little research he was actually there i said let waco. me know because i ain't know nothing about oklahoma really he was actually there at the uh waco when waco was, was going through all that stuff he was going through yeah he was there and watching and he was a military vet and i guess he was like this government is not right they shouldn't be messing with this man so what he did two years later was put a bomb in a um rider truck what is a rider or U-Haul truck yeah. on the side of a federal building that had the ATF offices in there. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason he chose that office. But it also had daycares. It also had other stuff going on in that building. And when that built, when that bomb blew up, it killed 168 people. Wow. A, a number of more kids and pregnant, pregnant people. So it seemed like that situation made one of the biggest terrorist, terrorist, um, how you say it? Like a terrorist... What? A terrorist group? Attack. A terrorist attack, yeah. yeah. So that Waco stuff, so like the government pretty much, you know, caused all that just by not minding their business. Right. 
Yeah. And just leaving people leaving alone. People alone. And then using military forces on your own citizens. Right, right. That's 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 not how this goes. Mm-hmm. It's not what this is supposed to be. Right. And why so, make laws and then you get mad when somebody And then want to overturn it. Right. And so that's why I try to tell people what well, well, this is why I have so many conspiracy theories when it comes to the government Mm -hmm. and when it comes to our so-called rights, which I call them privileges now. Right. Because it's not a right if you can take that away whenever you Yeah, whenever you feel like it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the ATF really didn't have any business there. Well, they kind of had a little business there, but they didn't have um, they didn't didn't have have any business using that kind of force. Yeah. They could have been like, hey, you got too many guns. Let us get these guns from you. Right. Confiscate the guns, and then go on about the about your business. Why are you breaking down? This is pretty much someone's family. These people are a family. You know right. What I mean? Eighty, like over eighty people had yeah. died, and it was several families in there. Just senseless. I feel like it was just, right. and the way the media portrayed it, like, oh, he doing this, he doing that. But when you really dive in and dig into it, the only thing the man was doing was sleeping with little girls. <laughs> That's the only really crime that he was really committing. You know what I mean? So. And they was willingly, you know, they was willingly doing it, so it would have been like a statutory thing. Yeah, it, been like a, it wasn't like he was going around kidnapping people. Yeah, I mean, they was like, you know, what's up, day? <laughs> <laughs> My mama was like, I should come over here, so what's up? Not was playing. But I mean, you they wanted to be the chosen one because they yeah. felt like if I sleep with this man, right, then my baby and whatever gonna be and, the chosen baby. And so. then what solidified him was everything he preached about what it ended up coming to pass. Yeah. So now people are like. Uh, uh-huh. maybe, maybe, maybe he was right. Yeah, maybe, maybe this he was did something. Yep. Right. I remember being a little girl hearing about this story, and I was like, you know, back then I just thought the man was crazy. He was radical. That he was a, you know, that I didn't even know that he was a Christian man. I thought he was just like some uh, crazy man in the, yeah. in the in the desert shooting people. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and just doing. He wasn't crazy no Bin Laden. Right, and that's what that's what they <laughs> made. They portrayed him to be there, and me being what 10, 11 years old. Yeah, somewhere up in there. <laughs> Maybe 12. But me being young and not really understanding what was going on, I was like, oh, my God. Right. White folks crazy. And that was the media's fault, too, yeah, yeah. which is controlled by the government. But that's a whole other story for a whole other time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we ain't right. going that far today. <laughs> right. Cause, Cause, yeah. Yeah, we tried to do that early. You know, like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we ain't going there today. <laughs> not today. Not today. But speaking of government control, which you was talking about earlier, I had read something today right before I came in uh-huh. where the FHFA, which is like the federal housing stuff that kind of um, oversees and regulates the mortgage companies, uh-huh. how they are going to buy people's mortgages. Huh. Uh, so basically, if you like with all the stuff that's going on, right. if you were if you got a forbearance, uh-huh. which is like kind of like a forgiveness, like, you know, we'll give you some time. some time to pay right. and if you're behind your mortgage or your loan can qualify for the federal government to come in and buy it hmm. and it's hmm. like do i really want, want the federal like government? buy it for you or from you buy yeah. it from, like they will pay the for mortgage the company for oh, the, you okay. they'll pay the mortgage company basically like if let's say you go out and buy a bike yeah and you needed a loan to buy the bike not assuming you that poor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna buy you. You say motorcycle. Right, right. yeah, yeah. Let's okay. a motorcycle. You need yes. to go and you need to go and buy this motorcycle and then um you get money from Gary so that you can buy the mm-hmm. motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And then you got the virus and you can't ride it. Mm-hmm. I can't get yeah, right. It. And so now the money that is owed to Gary mm-hmm. is, you know, it's building up interest and all this right. other stuff is going on. And Gary owe pe- other people too because mm-hmm. he's borrowing <clears throat> money from other people to give it to you so you can go buy this motorcycle. Right. I will come in as the federal government and pay la- uh, pay Gary mm-hmm. the money that was owed to him mm-hmm. so mm. that he can either lend money out to other people mm-hmm. or instead of you paying him, you paying me. Right. And then if you go any further without paying your loan, I will come and take your stuff. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. federal government, the, the laws are different yeah. than more, you know, right. mortgage companies. And I just laws. don't like the federal government, period. I mean, yeah, man, because they don't like ever that. give nothing without, like, getting yeah. something. Yeah, there's always a catch yeah. to that. It's like, whenever I had dabbled into, like, the Federal Reserve Bank and all that yeah. wickedry, mm-hmm. 
I'm just like, uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like this ain't this ain't what this supposed to be. No, I don't like that idea at all. Yeah, I don't like that. I'd rather just deal yeah. with the mortgage companies. But I feel like the mortgage companies are gonna jump on that because they want their money. So yeah, they probably like yeah. That sounds like, and especially if um, they're instead of instead of them waiting for you to pay your loan off in thirty years. Mm-hmm. They could just get it right now from another company or from, uh, from the government. Yeah, from the government, from the federal government. Mm-hmm. And wow, that's crazy, right? Because we were because we were also going to talk about how um, how to deal with your finances mm-hmm. during this time. Mm-hmm. And I was reading somewhere where um, people you owe money to, they the government is telling them not to report your lateness on your credit, on yeah. your credit report because mm-hmm. even though you are late on it like that's still a mark on your credit report and yeah. when you're trying to do other things and use your credit mm-hmm. they're like oh you have a mark there they don't care what it was for or yeah. what yeah. it was on which is a little seek which goes into a little secret a lot of people don't know if you if something happened to you mm-hmm. to where you weren't able to pay and you end up getting a negative mark on your credit because you were late you can attach notes to your credit report I did not know that. Right, and it like How alleviates you, the bad marks. Yeah, to oh, where it's no. like you can tell them, oh, I have a negative mark from November the 18th because I was sick or because oh, of can, coronavirus. Yeah. You can add a note onto oh, your credit report. No. And I don't know how to do it, but that's what I heard. Yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, this is neat. And this totally makes sense for what's going on now. Right. Even though people really aren't reporting to the credit bureau, mm-hmm. which yeah. now you can get a credit report every week now. Yeah. For just free. To, yeah, yeah. For free. Just well, to make sure. Year. Yep. Man, but the car lot I got my car from, yo, they, they are out of line. And after that's this is over. you get those buy here, pay here. Man, they, they have... <laughs> Like since since the national emergency became since we've been on quarantine lockdown, they have f- called me faithfully every single week when my note is due, like asking for this payment. Oh, and wow. I'm they like, bro, no, no nothing. No forgiveness. I'm like, no. yo, like, what are Why y'all you doing? Tell them you ain't working. Nah, man, they will probably ask for proof or something like that or anything. Cause I know like some pl- no some people who got laid off like their job gave them like a letter or something like oh, yo yeah. you've yeah, been laid off because of COVID for so. unemployment not for but you can still show it to your your uh like to your rent people yeah, you know what heck I'm saying yeah. or your car but car you people. ain't got to tell them because government has put out regulations to be like yeah. you really can't. Like you need to be more lenient. But shout out to the Department of Education. I got a letter from them Friday saying like your payments are paused until October. Department so. of Education. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I got student loans. Loan. Heck loan. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's... I've been on a payment plan for like eight years. You know, with them. <laughs> but, I'm yeah. buying in for burns right now. For burns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. My, mine was in default, but I put it on a payment plan. And I've been making payments like monthly for you know like two years oh, now. Good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but I got a letter. They were like, well, due to this. Is we don't, we're gonna suspend all payments without any fees or interest or anything until okay. October. So I'm like, yo, that's what what's do up. you got a degree in? <laughs> I didn't finish. Ah! Maybe, he was, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a college say, dropout. I'm gonna say everybody, you know, they got student loans yeah. and finish. I'm, uh, I'm a college dropout. But what is the point? I went to school for of school. Well, that back. too, and. <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of school? What's the point of going to college part, now? It's all part of the ma- what's the Well, I graduated in I graduated high school in 2007. That's when we still believed in college. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. so that's that why American I went. New day, new yeah. rules. You don't that have to. Yeah. Right. Well, but that program. Even though I don't like see a well, like especially getting student loans or spending all your time in college unless you're going for like medicine. Doctorates. Medicine. Yeah. Or yeah. something. Be a doctor. That's our law. Yeah. That's the only mm-hmm. time. Right. That I feel like it's very necessary to get a, yeah. a college degree because when you're dealing with other people's lives, yeah, you need you need to know what you're know doing. What you're doing. And it's talk. so funny because there's some you. people who even got doctors and still don't know what they they, they doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I had told a friend of mine like go to go to the community college for like a semester or two just to mingle, mm-hmm. just to get to yeah. know different people from different walks of life and learn something I did other that. than than what you getting when you sit in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, and don't get a student loan. Mm-hmm. There's so much fast for mm-hmm. 
yeah. and financial aid and grants and stuff. You got to know where to get your yeah. money. Yeah, you well, that's what I did. I graduated, it. and then I went to TCC for okay. like a year and a half off some like grants and scholarships. Like I was writing essays, and they were sending me checks and everything. So how did you get and, into uh, the student loan? Well, after TCC, I wanted to transfer to UNT. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I wanted to. University. Yeah, heck yeah. Where there's yeah. more money and to be spent. That's where I messed up. Yeah, heck yeah. No. So how long did you stay in UNT? Man, like, like with like UNC. six months, maybe. Six months. Yeah, I was just partying every day. I had a couple friends that like pledged Kappa and all that, so, so I was just. So you got all this money to pay back. Yeah, for mm, six yeah. months. Because I partied hard for six months. Yeah. I hope that was a good good. Time. Man, I mean, man, hell of a party. created so I'm many memories. Yeah. Heck yeah, <laughs> so many uh man. Them memories are expensive as. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, expensive memories, I got exactly. Some, I got some real good memories that were free. That, I was they only you cost took me a the bottle or two. Right out of my mouth, <laughs> cost me twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah, but um, you wanted to. You was talking about uh, was it Susie Orman. Yeah, so I watched. The Let's video. talk about her because I just found out she was a scam artist. Is she? But she the, looks like she's a scam. The way her hair be, cause she uh, to, uh, okay. Anyway, y'all, I'm sorry, cause I ain't gonna talk. I ain't gonna come for her, her. But cause I'm in. Anyway, uh, so I was looking at a video on YouTube, and they were saying that well, her advice is don't pay your bills right now while you in the corona, while we in this pandemic. She said, pay on your credit cards, pay the minimum balance, don't pay them all off. Yeah. Um, call your car, you know where you got your car from, and say, hey, can I give you part of the payment? Uh, call your mortgage lenders or your people that you pay your rent to and say, hey, can I give you some here or some there? Don't, ju- don't. Yeah. She said, don't pay all your bills and pay them yeah. up. Yeah, try to hold on to your money try as much as you can because money. that is really your only resource she says, like, you have. Right yeah. now is your, is the money. And what she said did make sense. Yeah. And I, I agree with her for the, for the most part. Because she also said, if you ain't got no other choice, max out your credit card. Yeah, did she say max them out if you have to? Yeah. No, I I I would I do that in real. I do that anyway. My one credit card. <laughs> so I love her advice about not paying no bills because I don't like paying. First bills of all, life. do not get a credit card. I have a credit card. No, you really need it. it, it no, you don't. It depends on what stage you are in in life. No, you don't. If you want to buy a house, you need some type of credit. You can't just go in there with. A four ninety nine and be like, can I get a three four bedroom house? Yeah. They gonna be like, I need to see. But I'm not finna. I shouldn't have to pay. A um, what's the word I'm looking for? I shouldn't have to pay in a, in an industry, mm-hmm. in order for you to build my credit up. Like it doesn't make sense to me because you know when you have a credit card, you mm-hmm. pay interest on it. Yeah, and as if you know you don't pay the whole thing, and it's, it's so. Com- Basically, if you don't understand it, right, don't, don't do it. it. Yeah. If you don't understand how credit cards work, mm-hmm. don't do it. Mm-hmm. And, more, and I believe that. Yeah. That is true. And I understand credit cards, like the minimum regular knowledge of it. Like I got mm-hmm. the roundabout, the Reader's Digest version right. of how the, the credit cards very work. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. I got but you. there's so much. Uh, uh, there's so much. Or so much information, there's so many other things that can factor into credit. I don't like I one. I don't even like the idea of credit. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't like the idea of credit, but I understand it. Yeah. I definitely understand it. Like I told you guys a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, I had just got a credit card, maybe like a year ago. Yeah. And it scared me to death because I was like, oh my god, I don't want credit. Right. But um, but it, it has helped. It's helped a lot. Yeah. Because now when people look at my credit when I go to get something, like before it would always be like, You need more credit or we don't know if you can pay or da 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 by me being a single woman, all that kind of stuff. But now since I've been having this credit card, I've been getting more credit card offers, I've been able to get finance for stuff, like whatever, you know, whatever yeah. I'm trying to get finance for. I like to just go in there and see if I can get right. the finance and I don't even get it. But if you if you do wanna very ignorantly go out and get a credit card you do not spend more money that you already have in your bank account. So get a small limit. Yeah. A low limit. Yeah, a lo- either a low limit mm-hmm. or either use it very minimally. Right. Use it for like gas. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely what you need to use it for. Right, or to mm-hmm. buy a Snicker bar. Right. Like you try to use cuz that pays off at the end of the month when your when your credit card bill comes in. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, okay, you know, I got it. Let me go ahead and pay it. Because mm-hmm. I didn't spend like hundreds of dollars this month and then you using a credit it. card, right? Mm-hmm. 
Because you're like, oh, Walmart got to stay or Kroger's got to stay. Let me go. Mm-hmm. Like, no, use it very minimally as possible. But um, going back to <laughs> her scamming. Yeah, it was so funny. So a few years ago, Su- Susie Orman start kind of started off like she got really popular uh-huh. when she was on the Oprah show. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. I remember that. And then she started doing prepaid debit cards, which don't ever do that. Don't ever, ever, never, ever, never ever, 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 ever do a prepaid. I'm lying. I had an H and R Block card one time when I had. But the, my but that, that makes sense to do oh, your taxes. Okay. That makes sense. But don't go out and get a rush card. Oh yeah. A oh, green yeah. dot card. Yeah. A gold bank card. They, they charge you every time. You they swipe. charge right. Mm-hmm. But with Susan Orman's card, which was called approved, mm-hmm. they were doing way more what? charges than regular mm-hmm. uh, prepaid debit cards were doing. Like you was getting charged two dollars just to call. To, just to call the people, be like, "Hey, you know, I'm having this problem. Can y'all help me out?" Then, if you That's like, crazy. it was it was so much to where if you ended up doing one of every charge, it was like you would end up paying thirty five dollars a month. Oh my goodness! Just to use your own Charges. money, right? And then yeah. your cards were limited. To like, well, it, it was just it was so crazy. And then eventually, cards were or accounts were being tampered with to where. They will put a hold on your checking account. This one woman was like writing a like, girl, I'm trying to buy groceries, medicine, my bills, girl, I'm right? The box. Unasked my money. When I was going through my whole thing with Green Dot, yeah. I was ready to travel to Pasadena, California. <laughs> and lit and since gas is like a dollar fifteen right, you now, made it third. We're probably like, oh no, no, no I wasn't using that gas to drive. What you using for? I was going. It, Oh, it's gonna be some smoke in the city. city. Got you. <laughs> okay, okay. You was gonna ATF them, okay. right? And then, um, then eventually they was like, "Hey, uh, Mr. Jackson, we got your email." They got it situated. Oh, okay, oh. I'm glad you did. You got it situated. Because I, so far, yeah, I was able to finally talk to someone and oh, okay. and get it situated, and then it was a whole bunch of other kerfuffle stuff going on. Uh-huh. But I was like, "Thank God y'all answered," because I was about to get ready. <laughs> Come, <clears throat> come up there. Right, because I knew your address, what the building looked like, the layout and everything. You know, I already Google mapped it out. <laughs> That's how you know when somebody needs their money. I was on... Uh, <laughs> it was just getting on my nerves. But yeah, she... Uh, but then eventually, like, I think it was like 2014 or 15, mm-hmm. they was like, girl, you can't do this no more. Good. Cut it out. So her just... approved card is no longer there. Good. She don't need to. So right. my, I mean, I don't understand. If you a money expert and you telling people how to spend their money and save their money and how to do all this stuff when it comes to money, why are you gouging people? like? Why are you doing people, scamming people like that? Because That's ridiculous. I mean, that's the... Um... That's the game. Yeah, I mean that's basically it. Like I, I, I hate when like I don't like people like uh, Susie Orman, mm-hmm. Umar Johnson, um, all these power black economics people. Mm-hmm. I do not like them because they have information for people and charging them to get in it. order to get the information, mm-hmm. and I don't like that. And they don't even be like the real reason how they got rich. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. They try to hold seminars and money. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. and so yeah. I, like I just do not like that idea of charging people for information. But doesn't that go under the whole you gotta make you gotta spend money to make money? You really don't. No, I'm saying, but that programming doesn't it go up yeah. under there? So that's, right, that's pretty much what that is. But basically, if you just you have to know how to be smart with your money Mm -hmm. because that's really what it is try to make it to where you are making a substantial amount of money to where you can take care of your bills it's like your networking your net your Mm -hmm. network is your net worth you know like a lot of these people just ended up lucking up and meeting the right person who put them in a position yeah Yeah, heck yeah always about who you know that's even in regular life like and that's that goes back yeah that goes back to we just saying do you need college because you could have two candidates. It could be a CEO of a company, and he can have his son over here who barely made it through school, who barely made it through, if he went to college, barely made it through college. And then you can have this college-educated person over on the other side. Right. Same age. Fully qualified. Same, fully qualified. Done did, done been there, done that. But who going to get that job? It's going to be his son because it's about who yeah, you know. Right. So. And I used to do that all the time at work, and I'm pretty, I could have gotten fired a whole lot more. Than what I you had. knew the right people. <laughs> no, no, because 
when I see un, uh, unqualified or less qualified people in a position, I always ask them, who'd you sleep with? No, like... <laughs> I used to always ask that question. question. Yeah. Who, you, who have, are you blowing? I have witnessed people get promoted because of... They know they, somebody. They, they know somebody or who they messing with. Right. So, it is what it is. I mean, are you afraid to be on the director's couch? <laughs> Would you go there for the right amount of money? Man, everybody got a everybody price. Everybody has a price, yeah. I'm going to ask you how much it is. <laughs> What's your uh, price, my player? I used to always say. My, my price would it never be. My prices are never. Like, back in the day, it used to be like a one-time yeah. kind of price. Now it's like, <laughs> I have to be That's able to I'm do out. it. Yeah. Like, it has to be residual. Yeah. yeah. To where. To last even you. When, yeah. To where even when I'm not even doing anything, you I can get my. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So more, now, first it was like, I want. I want my cake now. It's yeah. like no. Now it's like I want my cake to last. Yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's pretty much how I am. I mean, there's a few things I probably wouldn't do for money, but it's not a lot of stuff. Right. So I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you said <laughs> you said a few things you wouldn't do. Like that list is short. Like <laughs> the list of things you would do is. <laughs> it's, man. A, it's there. I mean, you might find you might find you know a few things. Right. Like, okay, man. Dude, what man. wouldn't you do for a conduct bar? I wouldn't. <laughs> What wouldn't you do? What wouldn't you do? Anything that involves a child or my children. Yeah. I wouldn't sell my daughter or my bo- my son. I wouldn't hurt someone else's child or whatever, you know, or yeah. be involved with that type of stuff. And animals as well. <laughs> I wouldn't do anything that involves an animal. But, um, yeah, it's not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. So just no animals. No, no animals, no, animals, no children. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah that makes much. sense. What about you? I'm not telling you. I'm not gonna try to and I'm negotiate not, well, with you. I ain't telling you on here. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll stuff talk that about you it wouldn't later. do. Oh, either well, I could tell you like stuff I wouldn't do, stuff I have done, and you don't gotta tell stuff. me what you have done because okay, because I lot. do got stories. I know, I got stories. I know, <laughs> and I don't think I don't think I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no. think Gary prepared. I don't think he right. had no hint. I had a friend who was like a virgin. He would like vicariously live through me. Because I would tell him stuff. He's just like, wow. I'm not a virgin. I can still vicariously live through you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, let's move on to the next subject. Because okay. we going way. Out, out of pocket. We were talking about credit. Now we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. What you know wouldn't do for a Klondike bar. Right. <laughs> To the next, but I mean, it's all together. Sex, yeah. drugs, and money. It I all mean, goes it's all together. Right. That's one of my favorite songs. Yep. <laughs> but um, w- um, I always tell y'all to you know email us. Which can you put this in the comment section for me? Yes. You can email us at pickastruggle at yahoo dot com if you have any topics you want us to talk about, or you can like this page and message us on this page, the Pick a Struggle podcast page. Yeah. Or you can um. Child, because I also upload these on YouTube. So if you like to watch us on YouTube under my YouTube channel, which is Dre Day All Day Every Day, you can leave a comment under those if you got any ideas for us to talk about. And so somebody did send me something. It was like, can you talk about this? Okay. And I was like, I really don't want to, but since I had opened up the dough, <laughs> yeah. might as well let you in. <laughs> I don't really want to. <laughs> I mean, like when we get to, when it start being several topics, we can pick and choose which one. We'll right. Put, we'll put it in the hat, you guys. Don't mean it just because you ask us something or you got a struggle. Don't mean we, it's gonna actually get we, to the shop. <laughs> we might. We'll get there. Too. Yeah. We try to. Get, we try to get to messy. all of you. No we are receiving a very high call volume, so your wait time will be <laughs> longer than usual. <laughs> but. <laughs> huh? <laughs> It is four fifty. I mean five fifty. <laughs> Talking about yeah. fifty three. He, he, he said he he said he didn't finish school. What am I looking at? By the time you yeah. we figured it right. out, it's gonna okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting not to like you, Gary. Anywho, yeah. uh, <laughs> this girl was talk. This girl had wrote to me and was like, "Can you talk about how?" The the thing that we shall not name no more on this channel. Rona. 
is affecting black people more than any other race of people oh, man. in America yeah, or in the United States. And I don't know what happened to me, but I wanted to comment shut up so quickly, but I was like, let me, no, let me do some research. Yeah, let, yeah. yeah. And plus I really don't know her personally. So let me not be so malice and so quick. All right. but <laughs> Just pop, 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 yeah. pop off. But I did the, re I was trying to do the research. Well, I did do research and I was looking it up and I was like, I ain't never known a virus to be racist. Right. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what's going on. And then I couldn't find any data mm -hmm. released by anybody to corroborate the notion mm -hmm. that coronavirus is affecting the black community mm -hmm more than any other community i look at it like they're, they're saying that because one first like whenever everything closed down everything except the essential jobs but the essential jobs are like gas stations uh trash man like all that stuff that minorities mostly are employees of so we're I'm mostly the ones using that word what, minority? What? i don't like that word Minority, I don't like it. Yeah, we really are the majority. Uh, minority, but yeah. Loser. So, so black people are are the ones that have the less work at home jobs. So we're being Where exposed to the virus more. Maybe we just living on <clears throat> opposite sides of the planet. Because and then they yeah. say the black like, people I know work from home. I mean, say like economically, black people in poor communities don't have as many health resources and uh, better food choices and better alternatives and medicines like that. So we're being affected by more. We're probably not. But where's the data though? I, I you like just going off on. I feel on. like that is just that agenda. That's fake news. They just trying to push that on us. Mm. Cause I don't think that's the truth. To like yeah. scare us. Like yeah, yeah. I will celebrate. I mean, true. not celebrate, but I will, you know, entertain the notion, but I'm going to need you to come up with some numbers. Yeah. Don't just go off, oh, from what I see on TV or what well, I see from the news, see. what yeah. somebody else said, or I'm just going to assume or deduce right. that it's nothing but black people out working in grocery stores and gas stations. Because honestly, that that could be your interpretation, which I don't even know where you're getting it from, because where, where we live or mm -hmm. where we are, it is a multicultural place. Mm -hmm. And so when I go out to grocery stores, when I go out to gas stations, I'm seeing several different races of people. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Hispanics and whites mm -hmm. and black people. They're all out there working. Uh, yeah. And they're all out there exposing themselves. Mm -hmm. And then let's just say for giggles mm -hmm. that it's affecting black people more. Well, <clears throat> the only number that I... or the data that you can research is that black people do have more underlying diseases than other races. And that is like the, the coronavirus is basically the, um, the straw that breaks the camel's back. You already had diabetes, right? Coronavirus ain't happening. Mm -hmm. You already had high blood pressure. And, but they're saying like those underlying reasons are from systemic issues, you know? Like when, when whenever our areas get gentrified, you know they they kick us out and take us to the neighborhood where it's nothing but fast food and liquor stores and everything. So we yeah. grow up. Well, then I'm gonna need worse. you to drive a little bit further. That was like that excuse was okay back in the day. Back in the day yeah. We I, are way ahead. We I have come. Like it fly we yeah. We can. You can just like where, uh, where I used to live. I used to stay off Collins and Abrams, mm -hmm. where there's nothing but like car lots and car places and. 7-Elevens and liquor stores and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if I go two miles past that, there's a Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. So it was like, um, if you, yes, poor communities don't have the options in walking distance mm -hmm. to get good food. But child, get in your car or get on those legs and walk a little bit further, mm -hmm. it's there. So we really can't use that, especially since groceries now can be delivered. Yeah. You don't really don't have an excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and so and, why, why are we leaving out the Mexicans? Because, like, right next door to where I live at, it's predominantly, like, minorities or, you know, people of what color. What I tell you? People of color. Don't even say that. They stay slick way trying to call us colored again. I don't so like that. So what do you want me to say? Black, white, brown, okay. Mexicans. So, it's majority in where I live is black and Mexican. Yeah. Then why 
we leaving them at? Why has it got to be the black folks? Like, I feel like the media. You know, black folks just love attention. Want, I just feel like the media always wants to say, oh, you know, you know, we killing them again. We, we getting them out of here again. They, the corona came just for them. But how are we the majority on the people that are getting sick and dying from it when it yeah. started in the Asian country? Right, and then... So shouldn't that be the majority? You would think. And then, like, backing up, like, because the last, like, kind of epic or pandemic that we had was HIV and AIDS, which mm-hmm. happened in the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. That was understandable on how it was affecting poor black, brown communities because it was really large in Los Angeles, like the big cities Mm -hmm. in like Southern, you know, like New York and certain places Mm -hmm. in Florida. So it it was weird how the this virus is affecting these certain places. But if you look at what's going on now, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's in Asia, Europe, Africa. North America, South it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. So how are you trying to separate yourself and be like, we died the most? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's them. <laughs> it's them. <Right. laughs> the wrong girl for them. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. So Anybody you, who's non black, right. you good. Because <laughs> the wrong gonna get you, but it's gonna leave you alone. No, I just don't I don't believe it and yeah. I probably will never believe it. I feel like you gonna, I believe it when I see the numbers. I believe when I see the numbers, but I feel like whatever you focus on, you're gonna get. Yeah. If I only, if you focused on just seeing black folks get the wrong and die, then you're gonna see that all the day, all day long. I don't see a lot of stuff about Corona anymore because I done took my focus away from right. it. Right. I know it's still there. But even when I scroll on my social media on, on Instagram and YouTube, right. I mean on Instagram and uh, on Facebook, I can see Corona all day, Corona, Corona, right. Corona, Corona. Now I don't. I don't see it as much because I'm not focused. I'm right. not looking for that. You and, know what I mean? And then what was really funny was when I was looking stuff up. I, mm-hmm. I think it was in Idaho mm-hmm. or Ohio, mm-hmm. one of those kind of places. Well, ain't no place <laughs> But they were saying uh, they actually did release the number of cases and and fatalities according to race. Mm-hmm. And it was really freaking hilarious because the caption or the title of the video or the um, the article was black people are hit more than, than uh, any other race. Right. And then it was like someone in Idaho or Ohio came out with their statistics. Let's hear what they have to say. And the white girl goes, as you can see here, 65% of people who have died from the coronavirus are white people. <laughs> 14% yeah. black people wow. and I think it was like 3% Hispanic. So I was like, yeah. first you trying to show off this narrative How and you then you show, like right. And then you showing something that totally negates or contradicts what the hell you talking about. But I think maybe also those numbers are kind of being misconstrued because like they're saying like our community is being impacted more because our community doesn't make up as much. So if it's like there's a thousand white people and 500 black people, if 500 white people get sick and 500 black people get sick. That's all of our people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then that's, that's only half of the white people. Yeah, heck yeah. It's still stupid. So like 14% of us are the ones dying from it, but we we aren't 65% of the population like white people are. So and that's, it, a, and, and that's another lie. That's just another lie because I, I feel yeah. like we it's more of us than them. At We're this more concentrated time. in certain areas. That, yeah, that's true. It ain't yeah. nothing <laughs> in Idaho. In Idaho. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Okay, how much longer we got? What's going on, boy? That was the longest four minutes of my life. Um, <laughs> what else do we have on here? That was pretty much. It. That was pretty much it. What y'all got going on this week? Back to work tomorrow for me. Must be nice. What about you, Gare Bear? Man, I'm in the doghouse again. What did what? you do? <laughs> how you gonna get to the end of the show to tell us that? Because I've I've it was noticed just last week. Nah, this happened last night. Like man, everything was cool, but she's one of them chicks. Like when she, when I do or say something that like gets on her nerves, she wants to just shut down. And be like, oh my gosh, leave me alone. I need some time. And I'm one of the people like, nah, you either gonna talk to me it. now or we just can, can end everything right now. Yeah, Why you I'm one of I'm one of those dudes. Like man, if you want to stay mad at me, we just end it. Wow. And yeah, you and I said that. I said that, and it led into other things being said. And I want to know what was said to where. What, what was the. <clears throat> what was the match that lit this whole fire? Man, to, to be real transparent, we was laying in the bed, and I was trying to, you know, fill up on her or whatever, and she was like, hey, you know we, are you expecting us to do it every night? And yeah. I guess... We ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> God said be free. free. Right. Okay? Especially knowing the, the <laughs> roller. <laughs> what else are we doing? 
And so me as like, you know, uh, naturally being a man, I made a facial expression like I wasn't cool with her saying we can't do something tonight. And so she like got offended and was like, oh, my gosh, I'm just trying to set some healthy boundaries and you're going to act like what that. About not doing it every yeah. Day. And then I, I like walked up and got out, walked out the room to grab something. And then I came back and she was like, oh, now you're just going to walk out on me because I'm telling you something you don't like. And. You know how y'all get. You just, you know, it just. No, that ain't me at all. Something, <laughs> some, something grew bigger than it should have been. Because I'm gonna be the one saying we're not gonna do it every night. What's wrong with you? Right. Man. Is your head hurt? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm yeah. having an attitude if you lay in the bed with me and you got on some clothes. It was a misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't birth you and you ain't my best friend or something, you need don't get in this bed right. with clothes on. Shoot. That is weird. Wow. Yeah, man. It was just like a stupid it's very, misunderstanding man. that turned you know what, into well, that, that was proof she probably needed some. She, she was she was so yeah, mad. Just, nah, don't do that. That's right. That's, that's what there's I like. a there's a such thing as yeah. spousal rape. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, Gary, you guys need to get be friends. Maybe y'all should have been friends first. Right. Because they was playing the wedding. <laughs> after Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Right. Thank y'all. Let's go. Thank y'all for listening and for watching and tuning in. We'll see y'all next week. We finally back in the studio. Thank the Lord. And thank you, Lana, Truth Seeker Williams. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. Oh, that was the one who left the comment. We're going to talk about her later. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Okay. We gone. Peace, Bye. Peace, <laughs> love, and air grease. <laughs>